Man, everybody's hungry, and that's why for St. Patrick's Day, we were on the hunt for somebody who could come in and share a, an Irish recipe with us. We were trying to figure out who to bring into studio, and we didn't have to look very far, Brie, because you had a great idea. I raised both my hands like yes, this. Yes, you did. Like, uh, pick me, pick me. Yeah, we, because is, we encourage that kind of raising your hands. <laughs> yeah, why not? Because I always own. say yeah. it, cooking in the crock pot, cooking indoors, it's a song we sing in our house. So we had to make the corned beef and cabbage and potatoes. Of course, because it's St. Patrick's Day, but let's start with first, Brie, what, what is corned Beef. Okay, so corn we hear all the beef, time, but what is right? Corn beef is there's no corn involved, in fact. Okay. But what it is is that it's actually a brined meat. There's a lot of salt. So it started in early sailor days because uh, they'd go out with all of their food that they'd need for a couple of months. And how do you preserve that meat? Refrigerator. That gonna, you don't have one, oh, right? Or even dang. an ice box when you're on a ship. So yeah. it's an old maritime thing. And okay. then it happened also, you know, after Ellis Island, all the immigrants coming over to the Northeast. Which is why it's kind of a uh, an Irish thing gotcha. as well, starting on the East Coast. And you can still get corned beef. We keep ours in the refrigerator now, but it's just a brined meat. And the corns are actually large salt corns, which is oh. what they call them corns in England gotcha. back in the day. Not so, corn the grain, but salt corns. But salt corns. And I didn't, I didn't actually know you could make it yourself because to me, corned beef is in those rectangular cans, you know, where you use the key to, yeah. un, to, to open it. So you're making it from scratch, though. Mm. What I see you, you've got the cabbage. I yes. know what that is. Yes. But what did you put in there already with the beef? First of all, I have to say, meat should never come in a can. Oh, okay. So if you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, but I got all of this at Fred Meyer last night. It was $1.97 a pound for the beef. For That's the we beef. got ours as well. Comes yep. in a package with a packet of seasoning that you can put in here. And wh what I like to do, I mean, a lot of people say you could just put water in there. And what I like to do, actually, I'm putting the cabbage in now because you should always wait until two hours before about you're ready to eat, the end. right? Because okay, you don't want it in there for too long. Okay. Too I put in about a half a can of Guinness for the maltiness. Okay. Something just, and all the alcohol cooks out, so it's not, you know, it's not going to be okay a drunken kiddos. thing, right? Sure. And then I also put in my secret ingredient, just about maybe a quarter to a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Hmm. And ah. that gives it kind of a pickled flavor, which soaks into the cabbage really nicely. Delicious. Right? Okay. So There's and onions in here too? Onions, onions potatoes. potatoes. And you could do carrots, you could do whatever veggies okay. you really want to with this. And I just put it on low for eight hours, so you still have time to go get that brisket if you want to do it tonight. Yeah, well. And then put it in the crock pot. The we get now, coming up in a little bit, we want to talk about my special sauce. Because for when it's done cooking. That's right. Because the first time I cooked this, quite a few years ago in college, a woman was standing behind me in the line at the grocery store and she said, This is what you got to do. So I'm going nice. to share that okay. secret with you. Nice. Oh, the best wisdom oh. comes from. Oh, yeah, here's Jay. Welcome to the show. <laughs> from all the way upstairs. Yes, <laughs> it's lofty. We, we could tell you put it in your crock pot last night before yes, you ever brought I it did, to work. Yes, I did, I did. And then I brought it into work. So we've got Jay's it cooking, just as hungry as we and are. we will definitely taste test. This is Good Morning Idaho's roast. <laughs> he's, so. he's eating and running. He fits right in here. He's also eating Idaho. raw cabbage. I'm going right. to let mine cook in a little bit. But we'll be back with Bree's special sauce. But i got to give you the forecast, too. Let's talk about oh, weather. That's right. Okay. Okay. Well, let me put down the knife first. Uh, <laughs> All right, if you have any thoughts on what's happening in that photo, let us know on our Facebook page. Just search for Good Morning Idaho. It's our caption. This we'll share our favorites on Friday. Speaking of favorites, Ooh. I might have a new favorite smell. Yeah. Right here in my face. Corned beef brisket. <laughs> Bree, you've been cooking it up. Who knew that she was an expert at weather and also an expert in the kitchen? We got your beef, and this is that you have been cooking it since last night. Yes. So it's ready for sauce now. Exactly. I so I put in the onions, the potatoes, the brisket. Everything was brought in last night. Now, there was a woman when I was buying my first corned beef to cook up when I was in college, standing behind me at the grocery store line, and she said, you've got to make this sauce. I swear by it. Crappy yellow mustard. I call it that. Because Not the it good is. stuff. It's just... The, like the French school shape, bus, yellow. Right? Yes, and I only spent a dollar on this bottle, okay. so I'm gonna let you do this. Okay. There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's your bowl and brown sugar. The two ingredients, the only two ingredients that you That's need it. for this sauce. Yes. No measurements. No measurements. Just put a whole bunch of that in okay. there. Okay. Squirt it in there, however much you want, and then you can also put in the brown sugar, and I'll let you mix that up, stir that up. And what I like to do is pull the cabbage or pull the beef brisket out. Okay. We're gonna put the cabbage back in because it's clearly not done yet. We want it to kind of pickle in these juices. I told you I used some apple cider vinegar as well as my Guinness. Perfect. Is that okay. the only liquid? Do you put water or broth or I, anything else? I put a couple of cups of water, water. in there. Okay. Otherwise, it's got a really robust flavor with just the vinegar, and the vinegar goes a long way, so you yes. got to remember that. Okay. Now, what you want to do when you get your sauce to the consistency you want, that looks perfect. Which is, is that too thick, too thin? No, that oh. looks okay. awesome. So see, no, no rhyme or reason. Anybody can do it. It doesn't take a genius or a recipe. What are you saying, exactly? <laughs> 
Even Spencer you're, can do it. You're doing what a she fantastic said. job. I'm <laughs> and, then, out. and then what you want to do with it is you want to kind of glaze it on top of your meat, right? Cabbage is still cooking in the crock pot on your juices. You heat the oven up. You glaze ah. it with the mustard, and then you pop it in the oven for maybe another 30 minutes while okay. your cabbage softens up a little bit and pickles, and that will glaze on the top, almost like caramelization. Oh, okay. Man. And then you Oops. can make more of it, so you can have it on the side as an extra as a dip sauce. or whatever. Right, that and it looks so good. I will say it again: everything that you see here, food-wise, was just fourteen dollars. My brisket was a dollar ninety-seven a pound at Fred Meyer, which is one of the best deals that I found. So fourteen bucks. What what a deal, right? Um, and you're going to have leftovers. I know we will. That's amazing. So here's my next tip. This is okay. my favorite thing. Is actually March 18th. That's when you get your corned beef hash for dinner. Now, mm. it is easier, I think, to chop it all up into bits when you uh, have it warm. Okay. And then you put it in a big bowl in the fridge uh, before you go to bed at night. So this is your leftovers. This is your, you leftovers. your leftovers. After you've already eaten whatever you're eating. Whatever you're okay. eating. And uh, you will just fry it up in a pan with a little bit of oil the next day and so eat it good. with your eggs, um, it is the most delicious breakfast you'll, you'll have all year long. And I'd just like to say too, just so people don't get worried, because it is corned and not cooked traditionally, the pink color it is looks, okay. Yeah, it's well, supposed here, to be I can pink. Turn it around for <clears throat> yes. you. It looks like it could be raw, but it but is it's not. not. Yeah. And it has been cooking for eight hours. So I know this is the only fork that I have, but who's going to... Who's going to taste Oh, this test. is our Can fork? Yeah, oh, I'm nice. sorry. That's I'm all I brought. Why would we okay. complain about a fork you know that what? big? I don't even need a fork. Come there on. you go. So yeah. we will Just post this it. all on our website and also post it on our oh. Facebook page as well so that you can get it. But I mean, sil silly, simple, stupid. Two ingredients. So yellow, mustard. Finger looking good. And brown sugar. How's that sauce? It's amazing. Is that not the mm -hmm. secret ingredient? Mm -hmm. There you go. The kids will love it too because it's sweet and a little tangy, but Snappy. it's not. Yeah, it's a really good flavor. This is my green I'm wearing today. My corn beef i Yes. Perfect. Love it. All right. I'm getting more. Take it away, Rachel. Thank you. This will all be on our website, too, if you need to look it up again. So this morning, it'll be at IdahoOnYourSide.com. Coming up next, more details on that expanded search for a missing plane, where crews are looking now at nearly 10 days after the Malaysia